What do zombies in The Walking Dead have in common? They have both been known to death. I mean, there's the comic books, a TV show, a TV show, a TV show, a crossover with the Avengers, and video games. Oh, and by the way, yes, there are three separate Walking Dead shows going on at the same time by AMC. But right now, we're talking about Telltale's adaptation of The Walking Dead. Not the emotional filled ones with Clementine, Lee, and AJ. No, we're talking about Michonne. Telltale is well known for breaking up their games into five episodes, emulating how episodes are broken up in TV shows. Michonne is a slight exception where the game is broken up into three episodes as opposed to five, like most of their other games. Episode 1 begins with inner monologue accompanied with a gameplay tutorial. We get a cool little action scene where Michonne seems to be hallucinating and remembering her daughters. Walkers begin to attack in a cool scene where the setting smoothly transitions between present time forest and her apartment in the past. It, it looks kinda cool, not gonna lie. After a few quick time events later, we are confronted with our first choice. Pull the trigger or not. Either way, it doesn't matter. We cut to three weeks later and it seems like Michonne has decided to tag along with the man from the intro and his crew. The man's name is Pete and it seems like two of his friends have gone missing. After a bit of arguing, their boat gets damaged with no chance of moving. That game then allows you to EXPLORE the ship. After the- Oh my god. Oh my god. This game has the funniest walking speed I have ever seen. It is so ungodly fast. And anyway, anyway. Pete and Miss Joan decide to make their way to a nearby wrecked ship in hopes of finding their friends, some supplies, or clues as to who the mysterious voice on the radio belonged to. The duo manage to make their way inside the ship and are confronted by a pair of siblings named Samantha and Greg, who recklessly make a ton of noise and attract some walkers into their location. After Miss Joan single handedly takes care of the walkers pestering them, Sam tries to make an escape with a bag of supplies. Michonne is confronted with the choice, take the bag or let her escape. It doesn't make a difference. <laughs> a group of well-armed scavengers then ambush our band of misfits. This is where we meet our main antagonists, Randall and Norma, a pair of ruthless siblings who run the colony of Monroe. Norma seems to think Michonne and Pete are allied with Sam and Greg, which is complete and utter bull considering how we just met them and threatened us with a gun. You can try and tell Norma the truth, but it doesn't matter. She won't believe you, and adding insult to injury, Greg frames you when she questions him, which makes his death way less emotional due to how Greg has been nothing but an annoyance. Michonne could have probably avoided any bloodshed or confrontation if it wasn't for Greg and Sam. When he turned, I made sure to break his fist off with a steel pipe and make the biggest mess I could possibly make. Episode 2 continues right after Greg's well-deserved death. Michonne, Pete, and Samantha make their escape off Monroe, but not before killing tons of innocent people, beating the crap out of Randall and Norma, and setting the entire community on fire. The trio then make their way to a nearby island to escape the pursuit of Randall and his goons while also searching for Samantha's house, which is somewhere in the woods. After arriving to Sam's house, we get another flashback in Michonne's apartment which oddly enough removed the supersonic walking speed. We get a short conversation with Sam said until he's rudely interrupted with a shot to the head. The game treats it like we're supposed to care about him, but what? No! Okay, this is probably a good time to rag on the characters. Characters are introduced way too quickly and they are killed off just as fast. There's no time for characters to develop, and most don't even have any redeemable qualities. I mean, all Greg did was cause problems for everyone throughout the first episode. When he was killed, I felt nothing but relief, with hopes that the same would happen to Sam. The same can be applied for their dad. Problem is that he was killed literally 5 minutes after being introduced, only having a single conversation with Michonne before getting put down. Anyway, Randall and his goons manage to make their way into the house and after another fight scene, he gets his ass captured by Michonne. The game then gives you the first choice that matters, kill Randall or let him live. I let him live, not because I found any value in it, but because I wanted to piss off Sam. We all have our demons, honey. Some are on the inside. 
Some are sitting right in front of us, wondering what kind of mother brings a child into this mess of world. There ain't no blue skies for them anymore. The episode begins with Norma contacting Michonne to propose a trade, Randall for Pete's crew. The rest of the episode consists of Michonne and her gang preparing for Norma's arrival at dawn. And no way, no way, it's back, it's back. Michonne's supersonic walking speed is back. God bless you Telltale, God bless you. Dawn comes and Norma soon arrives at the front gates with her goons and Pete's crew. She seems extremely genuine about having a simple trade without any bloodshed. Unfortunately, her hot-headed goons disobey her orders and ruin the entire trade, alarming a horde of walkers and causing all of their deaths. The only character's death that even remotely upset me was Norma's. She seemed like the only decent character, but her demise was caused by everyone around her being ignorant and reckless. A well-placed Molotov cocktail later in the entire house begins to burn down. Michonne attempts to make her way out while also being haunted from the constant hallucinations of her daughters. Eventually, she is confronted with a decision. Stay with her daughters and find peace? or leave them behind and live to fight another day. If you decide to stay with them, Michonne manages to find closure at the expense of Sam's life. I like to consider this the good ending, but unfortunately, that's not what I did. My pineapple brain decided to leave and now Michonne must continue life with both her hallucinations and Sam's whiny ass. Truly the worst ending imaginable. <laughs>